All right, in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to find a parasitic draw. Now, what is a parasitic draw? So let's just say that you get to your car and you wanna to go to your car after it's been sitting for a day or two that your car doesn't start. Now, you jump it, car runs fine throughout the whole day, and again, you go ahead and wait a day or two and the car doesn't start. Now we have a draw. Now, not all the time it's this. You could have a weak battery, and over time it just can't get weak. But let's just say that, you know, it just happens with a brand new battery. Now, obviously, we know it's not the battery. Now, make sure that your state of charge is not your issue. So let's say state of charge when you're running the car and that your alternator is charging as it should be. So make sure that your alternator is good. So anywhere from a good alternator is 13.1 volts when the vehicle is running to about 14.9 volts. Anywhere above that is overcharging and under is undercharging. Now most of the time that your car will be throwing a battery light. Um, but in this video I'm gonna be showing you how to find a parasitic draw because after two days of this car sitting that the battery dies. Um, if you haven't already, give it a thumbs up, comment down below if you have any questions, and hit that subscribe button for more upcoming videos in the future, and thanks for watching. In this video, we have a, I think it's a 2001 Nissan Xterra, um, SE or XE, doesn't matter, V6. Basically, customer complaint is that the car dies after a couple days. So, one thing you're going to need, probably some pliers, um, some needle nose pliers, so we can um, check our fuses. And then the other is a voltmeter. All right, so here is our voltmeter. Um, we don't need anything crazy. We don't need anything special. The one I am using is a Centec. Um, I actually really like this one, so I've been pretty happy with it. You can get this at Harbor Freight. I think it's around $34. Um, I spend the extra couple bucks. They have ones cheaper, but you wanna at least spend something over $20 for a multimeter. So this one was about $34. If not, it might be 40 now because of the whole pandemic everything going up but all we really need is the um, ac voltage right here so normally you would see this one right here so the ac let me get that zoomed in so we just need to be in this little area right here so this is how we're going to pour a little amperage i believe can we use this side i'll see if we can use this one i think it was this one that i was using it was either this one or this one but i'm pretty sure it's this one it's been a while since i did one of these parasitic draws but uh, we'll go ahead and test fit it now, with the good one, you will have um, a fuse side and an unfused side. Now, we want to use the one with the most amperage. Um, now, if you're going to go over 20 amps max, you will destroy your whole multimeter. So, if you're going to start the car or whatever, do not do that while you're doing this process because you will destroy it. So, we're going to switch over our positive lead over to our... It's unfused. It's not fused. Some come fused and some don't. Um, but this one is 20 amps max. Um, this one is 200 milliamps. So obviously we, we wouldn't be able to use that one because just in case we get like uh, like one amp or two amps, we would destroy this, we would pop that fuse. So we're gonna go ahead and set that to that. And then you are gonna disconnect your negative terminal and then make sure that it's not touching with your positive. So I'm gonna set this right here just like that. So we're not gonna be in any series. And then I'm going to go ahead and wedge in our positive terminal. And you want to do this with the negative side. You can do it with the positive side. doesn't matter. But they say to do it from the positive side. But still, it still works as the same for the negative side. Now, the reason why we're doing it from the negative side is that if something shorts out, immediately we won't cause a huge arc. We'll just kind of pull that out, whatever. We have more grounds that are accessible than a positive is. So all mostly all the positive cables are covered and we won't have a, bit, a high risk of damaging something. So we'll end up destroying our multimeter if we do touch a positive, but again, we can actually pull it out as fast as possible or pull it out as quick um, as possible before damaging anything else. Um, so which is why. Now I got a little hose clamp because it's kind of hard to touch that. So we're gonna go ahead and put in our hose clamp. Now, the reason why I have that is so I can just wedge in our multimeter just like that. So we're gonna go ahead and turn on our multimeter and when doing this, well, you might see some spark. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So it's definitely not in the little voltage right there. So we're gonna go ahead and switch it to 20. Um, and right there, you hear a little spark. So right there, we're just gonna go ahead and wedge that guy in there. 
and we have just want to make sure that stays in there 0.45 um, now that is a little bit excessive or that's way too excessive and then now we're kind of bringing it down because the computer is all functioning um, once you first go ahead and do that you're obviously going to get a higher voltage because the car's computer is actually turning on so right here we're at 0.14 which is really high anything 0 0.05 and below is perfectly fine um, especially for newer cars because the computer stays on for a while so after 15 minutes um, it should go back down a little bit so sometimes you have to sit there and wait so next thing what we need to go ahead and do is that we need to go ahead and pull out each individual fuse and see what circuit is being messed with um, so sometimes it's not always a fuse it could be a actual pump but it could be a solenoid um, but if it is one of those usually you know they should have a fuse if not then you would have to unplug all the connectors or you could have a short to power which is actually keeping something on now a short to power is when one hot wire is actually rubbing with another hot wire and you actually bypassing the main it's kind of like a like a house light switch so those two hot wires bypass each other instead of going to the switch itself by you flicking it on and it turning on you know you're manually turning it on this will actually turn on everything by itself so you actually skip the switch and you get to straight to turning on everything now it's not going to mess up anything it's just you're shorting out the power and you're skipping the actual switch and you're shorting to power and you're you know you're kind of it's like a bypass basically um in that kind of sense so we need to get rid of that so we need to locate our fuse box. Some cars could have one, two, I think the most I've ever seen was five fuse boxes, um, depending on what type of vehicle. So we're gonna go ahead and locate our engine fuse box because it's our easiest one to get to and we're gonna go ahead and pull this off. So we got that. So basically you would see what circuits that you have. Now some vehicles do have it. Ford doesn't like to show it. European cars don't like to show what they're on there. And so we'll basically see what's going on. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start off with all the fuses and see which one is the actual issue. So we're going to just kind of go in a row and just pull each individual one off. All right, so I went ahead and put our voltmeter right here so we can see if anything changes as we pull out each fuse. So we're going to go through it and you're going to do one fuse at a time. So you pull out that fuse and I would say wait about two seconds and see if you see any changes. So we don't see anything and then we put that fuse back. And then same thing, we're going to pull that, we're going to keep on going down the road. So we'll wait until we see if anything changes. Let me get this right over here so you guys can see it. All right, immediately we saw our voltage drop down. Now this is technically a still a little bit too high. Um, and we want to get that a little bit lowered, but we know what's what fuse is actually our issue. So let's go ahead and check out our Let's go ahead and zoom in on this So right here, so we're on this lower row So our next one would be our horn now our customer did state that he would randomly get horn like the car will start honking and I already disconnected the horn um, So that's why hence the car is not honking right now so our issue is with our horn circuit. So now we got to figure out what's going on with our horn circuit. And I'm not going to do that in this video. Um, I got to make sure that the customer's approving everything. But as soon as we connect this guy back in, our voltage should jump right up. And so same thing right there. It does jump up. So we're going to go ahead and keep this disconnected in the meantime. But we don't have a horn and so forth. Now let's say everything was fine in that video or in, in this little fuse box. So we would go right in here um, and basically open the door. Now some fuse boxes can't handle it because um, what you like, what you need to do is when you open up the car that your dome lights might come on. So as you can see, as I open that up, we gotta make sure nothing is being turned on. So certain cars will have a um, kind of like a door, like a door lock so it lets you know when the doors close and so that's why the car's beeping it'll let it's a door indicator um so it'll let us know when the door is open so we need to actually 
either push this down and hold it in the same time but it'll be a little bit hard to hold that so what you can do is you can disconnect this unplug it but sometimes they're a little bit hard if not what you can do is you know put some tape around it and and hold it shut or have somebody else hold it whatever so however you want now some cars don't use that feature and then what they'll use is they'll use the actual lock and then that what you'll need to do is you'll need to actually lock it manually you can use a screwdriver because some of them are actually pretty hard and then you would basically locate your second fuse and go ahead and do that but now you need to make sure that there's no lights on um so we got to get that covered out the way so as i have the door open and i have the little thing beeping i should have a higher voltage it should be fluctuating so every time you hear a beep it goes up so just like that so that's pretty much it um Hopefully this video helped you out. Give it a thumbs up. Comment down below if you have any questions and hit that subscribe button for more coming videos in the future. And thanks for watching.